Hello everybody, what is up, and welcome to the one and only episode 8 of the official PlayStation podcast for Follower, the PS Procast. My name is Christian Buckley, and I'm joined by my fellow PSF member, Omar Nakbi. Hey yo! If you don't know, the PS Procast is where myself, Omar, and maybe some PSN friends now and then get together and talk PlayStation and the gaming industry every week. Again, we're under 20, so we're still experimenting with things. Uh, this week, we're going to try out some new formats, specifically just focusing in on one thing. But first off, how you doing, Omar? Oh, I'm doing all right. You? I'm good. It's very, very hot out. Yeah. Uh, happy Easter, Xbox. Yes. Yeah. Yep. That's the saying. I don't know. <laughs> um, As Usher once said. <laughs> yeah, that uh, timeless quote. Um, yeah. So yeah, uh, have you been playing a lot of stuff lately? Uh, well, I finished Persona Five after like a hundred hours. <laughs> yeah, I'm st- I'm behind. I haven't played for a few days. I think I'm around yeah. like thirty. Yeah, that's a that's a good game. Yeah, it is. Um, I just wanted to make sure my plate was clear for our prey coming out soon. Yeah. So, yeah, prey. Hyped for that, but um. Yeah. One of my. Well, actually, first off, you and I share something in common when it comes to gaming news. Uh, uh-huh. There's one thing we both love very much. Do you know what that is? Uh, Fast and the Furious? Close. Well, that's not gaming, I guess. <laughs> uh, Star Wars, maybe? Close, but more broad. Uh, all right. The one um, thing we both get hyped over. Uh, Japanese video games? <laughs> I don't know. All right, I'll give it to you. It's press conferences. Oh, yeah. Yeah, those are great. So, um, <laughs> this past weekend... Speaking of Star Wars, though, was Star Wars Celebration in Orlando, Florida. And it was a very awkward press conference. I'd I'd barely call it a press press conference. Sorry. Did I miss this? You gotta tell me. (laughs) So, obviously, earlier in the week, we got that supposed leak. I'm pretty sure EA leaked it as part of some marketing thing. Oh, Um, you think? Yeah, I can see that. (laughs) Yeah, because, like, a day later, they posted this. It's like, you intercepted a transmission. The full reveal is coming later this week. Oh, yeah. And also, like, that trailer wasn't anywhere else, was there? Like, that first one that leaked? Yeah, it was just on uh, Vimeo. Yeah, and then there was a different teaser, and then there was an- another trailer, right? Right. Yeah. So, um, all right. So yeah, uh, plan leaks and all, EA decided to bring one Star Wars game to Star Wars Celebration this weekend, and that was Star Wars Battlefront 2, the fourth game bearing... Or actually, there's been several spinoffs, but well, there's a, there's like two PSP ones, right? Yeah, the, and then there's DS ones, and then oh, all okay, right. So yeah. this is probably like the ninth, but yeah, fourth mainline, I guess. If yeah, you wanna be like that. So, anyways, Battlefront Two got its own reveal panel Saturday morning at Star Wars Celebration Orlando. Uh, you didn't watch this, right? No, I missed it. Okay. Sadly. So I had it on the background. Um, th- it was really cool. They brought out some of the developers from the different studios because there are, I think, three. There's like nine. Oh, yeah. More like three. Yeah. yeah. I, I think there's three major studios, including DICE, that are working yeah. on this one. If I recall correctly, it's like DICE. Then it's uh, Criterion, who made the Burnout games. Mm-hmm. And then Motive, which is a new studio In... founded by Jade Raymond. Yes. So... In EA Montreal, right? Yeah. Something like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So those are the squad they have working on the new Star Wars Battlefront. So they brought all the head of their teams out uh, to celebrate Star Wars. They were doing some introductions about what the series means to them and all that stuff. But then they got into the down and dirty and gave us some info on Star Wars Battlefront 2. Hey, yo. So first off, they showed the cinematic full reveal trailer. You saw this, right? Yep, yep. Uh, First off big first impressions on that i really dig the vibe they're going for it's yeah just that that approach they're taking with the story and everything and that just seems so novel and cool i I don't know i know the main thing it reminded me of is um i remember did you ever play republic commando no that was the um the bounty hunter game right no it was was the you played as a delta squad which was a group of clone troopers during the prequel era Oh, right, okay. And then there was a sequel novel uh, about the same group, I believe. Um, it was a long time ago since I read it, but it was the same group as the Imperial Stormtroopers. So, oh, okay. like, it was still a squadron of elite um, soldiers from the Empire's perspective, and I was getting heavy vibes of that book from this trailer, which is awesome, because that's the whole Delta Squad thing is really cool. But, um, yeah. 
yeah so I have a list of all the info we have on the campaign so we can go through that and discuss the campaign and then multiplayer afterward can we uh, openly talk about KOTOR spoilers at, at this point yeah all right because like when that game came out it was pretty big that like you were pretty evil right yeah or like you used to be evil so yeah, now no. like do you think this one's going to go in a direction where like it's evil but then at the end you're a good guy no I think it's more along the lines of uh, building sympathy for the other side because I feel like sure we haven't really got that much aside from things like uh, I'm playing uh, Force Unleashed that was uh, close yeah I was going to say what Starkiller <laughs> yeah <laughs> um, but yeah like you said with KOTOR and with that they always ended up turning to the light side yeah. but in all of the in at least the panel they had the story executives were really focusing on what's it like for someone who is devoted to the empire's cause to look up and see the death star explode and then be more <laughs> motivated to like pretty awesome really avenge the emperor so yeah. this is like sounds like it's full-on go empire which i love see yeah I, i'm curious to how they do that because like um i think when star wars it's very much a series about like black and white you know there's the good side and then there's the bad side and they're really evil mm -hmm. but like when they deal in the grays though and it's more kind of like it's not really so black and white good mm -hmm. and evil that's like when it's at its best i feel like like kotor 2 especially yeah and i know this is off track a little bit but with what the episode 8 looks like and the whole last line of that trailer it seems like they're getting yeah. more in that direction which i love but totally uh as far as this goes uh the campaign is canon in the overarching star wars world story which is really cool because this that is, is the, cool. This is going to be the first, I believe, in canon new game that uh, Disney and Lucasfilm or Lucas Arts, I should say, have put out since the purchase. So that's cool, and also like that game has like content from the prequel era, original era, and the new era, right? Uh, not in the campaign. The campaign okay. is the only canon oh, part. Oh, so just the campaign is the canon part? Right, because All right. when Battlefront 1 came out and people, or the the reboot of Battlefront, and people were saying, oh, is this canon? Because they said the games are going to be canon. Well, And then everyone was like, well, how can it be canon if Return of the Jedi Luke is on Hoth fighting Darth Vader? You know, <laughs> so it's like... Right. I never thought the multiplayer in that was supposed to be canon, but this sounds like it's the first official Star Wars video game that is going to be canon in the new Disney era. That's cool. Um, speaking of that, though, the campaign takes place between Episode 6 and Episode 7. All right. That's like that Jakku map from the last game, right? Right. Yeah, that was post. Actually, that might have been canon, that DLC. The Jakku map? Yeah, maybe. Because maybe. I know that was around the same time as the book that came out about Jakku. I think mm -hmm. it was Lost Stars. Having a canon story between 6 and 7 is really cool. Um I'll get to this further down the line, but it will give us like more insight into some of the characters that we know and love from Star Wars and what they were up to. Yeah, for sure. Uh, but the I mean, main... there's a good like 30 year gap, right? Or yeah. Something? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Long time. Totally. Uh, but the main character, your protagonist, is the leader of Inferno Squad, which is an Empire Special Forces team. I don't know if I wrote down her name. I believe it's. I can check very quickly. Um, I think it starts with an I. Oh, Iden. I-D-E-N. Her name's Iden? Yes. She is the leader of Inferno Squad, an Empire devotee uh, who was born and raised on an, a planet that is fully in support of the Empire, which is okay. a new planet to the Star Wars galaxy. They were talking about this in the panel as well. They always thought that when they show off the Empire on planets. Um, this is actually very noticeable and you don't really think about it. It always looks like it's an occupation, you know? Like there's always bases and stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So they wanted to set out to create a planet that is fully behind the Empire, you know? And do you know if, it, if they're like actually behind it or are they like being held up at like blackmail in some kind of way? No, is they're like, actually behind it. Like they're more like, yeah, we like the Empire? Yeah. See, that's super interesting. I don't know if anything in Star Wars has done something like that. Yeah, not to my knowledge. Yeah, no, that's cool. I wonder how it comes across. Because, uh, like, they, yeah, sh it... they show concept art of it. Mm -hmm. The architecture looked very interesting. It looked awesome. like it was 
constructed by an empire, so it did have, like, Star Destroyer, Death Star vibes, because a lot of, like, black and gray, slanted, long, tall things. And, awesome. um, tapestry, like, empire symbols everywhere. Mm -hmm. Uh, looks really cool. But, um, yeah, so that is a new planet. There are, I think that's going to be a multiplayer map as well as the campaign. Neat. Checking that out. Um... And lastly for the story that I have written down here that I alluded to earlier, there's going to be an unconfirmed number of story chapters where we get to play as Luke Skywalker and Kylo Ren. I didn't know that. Yeah. That's cool. Uh, is that like a different campaign then or is that like... No, it's in the campaign. So, okay. So you, right. you as Aiden are going to interact with them in some way and then you get to play as Luke and Kylo Ren. Okay, I hope that's done cool, because like, I also, like, the new story that they're make, making seems really interesting, mm -hmm. to the point where, like, I hope they don't, like, kind of water it down by having these segments that are just, like, clearly fan service kind of things. Right, I feel like, like if we want to sort of break down what this whole press package is, mm -hmm. um, it seems like I didn't right now it looks like in my mind at least she's going to have some influence on the starting of the first order maybe oh okay something like that maybe further down the line she like uh dies as a martyr for her cause and then they're like sure. let's rally and create the first order something like that yeah she's definitely dying in this game oh yeah right yeah um but um yeah that's that seems like a big story to take care of though in a game i think like for disney to look at this and say okay you can do that sounds really cool yeah i like that a lot yeah uh but specifically looking into luke and kylo right in this time period i think is going to be really cool because this is the first we're gonna this is the first time we're gonna see luke doing something besides standing on a cliff right post episode <laughs> six you know like in yeah. the canon um so that's gonna be really interesting to see how that gets taken care of because i don't think they're gonna show off jedi temple level stuff but maybe luke a couple years after end of return of the jedi and then kylo ren a few years before episode seven i'm guessing that's how the time gap works probably yeah that would make sense right and you're not gonna have like like pre-born kylo ren i guess yeah i don't think we're getting ben solo at all you know no, that seems like something they'd, they'd reserve for a flashback in like eight or nine yeah, and it looks like, based on the trailer, it looks like we're going that direction anyway, so I don't think they'd want to spoil it. Oh, I forgot Wait, to mention... For the 8 trailer or the the game trailer? The 8 trailer. Oh, okay. I forgot to mention, this comes out November 17th. Oh, cool. So, Is that a Friday? Uh, I didn't look it up. I'll check right now. Here. But, um... Yeah, so this is almost a full month ahead of the film. Yeah, that's a Friday, by the way. Okay. That's two weeks after Call of Duty World War II. Nice. So, yeah, this is... It has a bit of time ahead of the film to get out there, just like the first Battlefront did before Episode 7. Yeah, that was about a month as well, I think. Yeah, and then the Jack Who DLC came right beforehand. Right, 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 right. Uh, one thing... Actually, no, I'll get to that further down again. So, that's the campaign, basically. That's all yeah. we know there. Um, well, there's some stuff about the writing staff, too. Right, I, I was going to ask what... you about that. Well, um, I think the lead writer, or like one of the writers, is um, used co-wrote uh, Spec Ops: The Line, mm -hmm. which is like one of the best military shooters I think out there. Yeah, tells a really cool story. Mm -hmm. That actually, like, when we talk about this, like black and white Star Wars stuff, and I, th I think Spec Ops: The Line is very good at dealing in the grays of war rather than the black and white. So that seems really promising. Mm -hmm. You know, also, um, Mitch Dyer of IGN is co-writing it too. Yeah, I think this is his first game. I've seen his stuff on IGN. It's fine. So um, let's see what he does. I guess I'm kind of curious about that. Yeah, that's um, that's a cool getup for that guy, though. Yeah, that's really awesome. It's, I'm, yeah. it's cool to see that um, for sort of the expanded universe stuff, they're getting fans of Star Wars to do it because that's basically what the expanded universe was before. Yeah, I mean, I think Rogue One was like that a lot too, right? In terms of. Yeah, basically. Well, honestly, like, everything about this new trilogy is is just fans of Star Wars coming back to make it, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> like, I, I think Ryan Johnson said he was, like, some big super fan. I mean, you don't get into the movie business, I feel like, at this point, if you didn't like Star Wars. Yeah. Like, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, that's true. Um, moving on to multiplayer, though. Uh, it's back 
and better than ever is how they pitched it. So, like we said, all eras are available in multiplayer. Uh, the prequel trilogy, the original trilogy, and the sequel trilogy will all be represented in maps, characters, heroes, uh, vehicles, and uh, uh, factions. So, all right. One question about the vehicles thing before we get really into it. Mm -hmm. uh, my biggest problem with the first Battlefront, well, not the biggest, but one one thing that really grinded my gears. Same. Was the uh, was the power ups? Same. Yeah. Yeah. I hated that. Yeah, is that? I, do you know if that's still in there? Um, I'm looking back on the article right now. I don't think they touched on it. All right. But I really hope it's not back because I did not like that either. That was my least favorite thing. Like you should be able to see like a vehicle and just get in it and yeah, then like not load into a screen. You know what I mean? Yep. That'd Battle be it. Like Battle a game Front changer. Two did it on the PS2. Right. And like I would take like those graphics are pushing are amazingly gorgeous, but like I would take a cut if it means we can do that. Yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. So, this is all news to you, right? All the multiplayer info, basically? Yeah, I didn't know they released any of it. I know okay. they said some stuff about, like, DLC plans and whatever, but I didn't see any of this. Right. So, character class loadouts are returning from the original Battlefront, so it's not any more, like, interchangeable weaponry, you know? Wait, so original Battlefront, you're talking about, like... Like uh, Battlefront Robert 2 and Battlefront original original. Okay, so, like... They're more like Battlefield games now than the last one was. Right, so you're, you're going to have like your Medic, your Stealth Trooper, your Scout Trooper, all that kind of stuff, the Heavy. Yeah, that sounds awesome. That should hopefully provide like a good level of depth to the game. Right. Than, and like um, the first first one did, you know? Yes, so the classes are also going to be uh, upgradable and there is a progression system in line. Okay. Which sounds very cool. So you get to sort of customize your loadout and your skill set. Yeah, that, that seems like it'll go a whole mile from the first game, you know? I th Honestly, I think it'll just add a lot of, not even depth, but just, like, replay value. Yeah, totally. Like, it just adds playability right there, you know? Yeah. Because the first game, I felt like I wasn't really working towards anything. Exactly. Everybody just on my console is going to use that. Yep, yep. Um, but the upgradable classes are transferable across all the eras. So, basically, if I upgrade, if I pick a scout trooper to be my main dude, and level him up as a scout trooper in Endor, so like classic stormtrooper scout trooper. Uh, my progression with his character will carry over when I'm a first order stormtrooper, a rebel, or a clone trooper, anything like that. It will transfer across eras. Cool. So, uh, how many factions do you know that there are, by the way? Because you mentioned like there's the first order. So there's the rebels and the stormtroopers. Right. Um. First Order and Resistance, I'm assuming, is going to be pretty similar to Rebels and Stormtroopers. All right. And then the prequels have the clones and the CIS, which are the droids. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, and they actually showed off a, a screenshot or concept art or rendering of like a First Order Stormtrooper, a Rebel fighter, an Imperial officer, and a droid. The droids are back which is very cool. Clones are back. That is I'm, cool. That's the one thing. I, we can get into that after this, but I'm so happy the clones are back. Um, aren't, I mean, aren't they just stormtroopers? I, I don't know. Maybe I'm showing my lackey in this info, but like they're clones of what? Django Fett? Yeah, is but it? I just love the design of the clones, honestly. It's and like I, slightly different from the stormtroopers, right? Yeah, they got that cool shark fin. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah all right. I, I get you. Um... Vehicles and heroes also have progression uh, trees and customization to them as well. Uh, my X-Wing, I can choose to put all my power into it being like speed instead of uh, power, or, like really buff down on the shields. And same thing with like TIE Fighters or A-Wings or Y-Wings or anything you can get your hands on in the game will be customizable to a certain extent. That sounds like a deep set of mechanics right there. Yep. And... I thought you were talking about like cosmetic. Um... Oh no. No, that sounds like that sounds crazy. I know. I don't even know. Does anything do that? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> and the other side of that was heroes have progression systems too. So I'm guessing like your Anakin Skywalker, like when you get the chance to play as Anakin or you get the chance to play as Chewbacca, you can level them up. So like your Chewbacca has 
a bunch of grenades, but his bowcaster isn't as strong. Or like your Anakin has force lightning, but he can't jump as high. I'm assuming it's going to be type of stuff like that because they did say heroes are going to have their own progression. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Are the hero stuff, is it still um like on the map in their power ups for that too? Cause wasn't um, that how, or was it like, were they like kill streaks or something? I can't remember what they were. It was they the coin hologram spawns randomly on the map. Okay. And right. they did say that uh, both heroes and vehicles will now work on what they're calling a resource-based system. So okay. from what that means, it kind of sounds like they might act like Titans in Titanfall. Uh-huh. So, like, get this many points and you can become Yoda. Get this many points and you can call in an X-Wing. So could you have, like, three Anakin Skywalkers in your team at the same time? I mean, hopefully, because that's yeah. what like made the old Battlefronts fun. But right, that's cool. Because like, yeah, I love how Titanfall does it. Because yeah. like, it. I think there is a timer at some point. Like, you will definitely get a Titan in the game. Right. Yeah. But there are the points too. Mm-hmm. And but yeah, that's always that feels like you're working towards yourself. Right. And it's, in a way, yeah. I think that will add more of a team based feel. You know, because in Titanfall, it it feels like you're working with your team, and if you get the Titan, you can help out. Right. Yeah. But in the first Battlefront, it felt like oh, crap, there's a TIE Fighter coin. Everyone's going to sprint for it, you know? Right. And it, whoever gets it, if it's not you, you're, like, pissed at them. Mm-hmm. Because that just whole system of spawning was terrible. Right. So they are taking that into account. Um, so hopefully there's a different level of it. But I did get a vibe of Titanfall when I read that. Definitely. that that That's the right direction, for sure. Yeah. Uh, hero-wise, there are a few confirmed so far. Uh, Ray. Kylo Ren, Darth Maul, Yoda, and Luke Skywalker. All of them are confirmed to be returning. They're actually being added. Luke is the only one returning. But... Yeah, I thought it's kind of crazy, that cover of the game, man. <laughs> Seeing both Rey and Darth Maul in that cover. I know, cover it's such is a kind cool of an cover. amazing thing. Yeah, it's... It's so cool. <laughs> it's really cool. Yeah, honestly, I got... Uh, now that I'm thinking of it, it reminds me a lot of the original Battlefront 2 cover. Do you remember that one? It was the clone trooper in the middle, and then on the left side, it was, like, Obi-Wan and Yoda and someone else, I yes. think, and on the other side, it was Darth Vader and Dooku or something. Yes, totally. It's yeah. a cool cover. It's, like, it it takes into account everything about Star Wars and just puts it there. I know, yeah. I actually found my case for the original one the other day. I think I had that game on PSP. Oh, uh, yeah. The PSP game, Battlefront games were actually pretty good. Dude, they were the best. That was... Remember the PSP with the Darth Vader? On yeah, it? yeah. I didn't. I, I never had that one, but that was pretty cool. Yeah, it was cool. Um. Uh, and as far as continuing this trend of listening to fan complaints, multiplayer space battles are going to be a thing officially in this one. I know they got added kind of in that Death Star DLC, but yeah, f- from the way they were talking about this, it sounds like and the concept art they showed off of like running through a hangar. It sounds like... Do you remember in the, the original Battlefront 2, it was like, you're on a freighter, you hop in an X-Wing, you fly over to an Imperial starship, and then you land in there, and you have to, like, sabotage it? In the original what? In the original Battlefront 2. No, nah, man, I can't remember at this point. Okay, well, it was sort of like, infiltrate an enemy base, but you could still be flying around and fighting a bunch of um, enemy starships. Uh, that like were other players or just AI and then you had to basically destroy the opponent's ship by like shooting the bridge outside getting rid of the shield generator inside so you could attack the outside of the ship it was so much fun so yeah. hopefully this is exactly what they mean by that yeah that sounds great because um, what was, you no I was saying like the space battles that means like are we gonna be like because in the first game we just had like ship battles but they were like within the planet's atmosphere yep we're talking about space battles as in full-on, like, black, white stars, that kind yes. of thing? yeah, because... All right, sick. What the space battle mode was in Battlefront 2 on the PS2 was this, like... All right. You have two... So- you're, like, your two spawn points are the Rebel ship and the Empire ship, you know, or the clone ship and the, and the Separatist ship, and then you just hop in and go at each other. So... Hopefully that is what this means. I assume it is because I don't know how else they'd go about it. Um, yeah, no, I I hope you know it would be cool if, if they added like a VR option for this mode too. That'd be really cool. Or something like 
honestly like that star wars battlefront mission in vr is still like one of the best things i've done in vr oh yeah I forgot it's about so that. cool mm -hmm. it's so cool um there isn't gonna be a season pass this time that's i think that might be like my favorite piece of news about this game mm -hmm. because every dice game i play the community like falls off when that season pass comes out yeah you know or when the first piece of content comes out like battlefield 4 1 3 they did all had that problem did one have a season pass battlefield one yeah yeah i believe so okay and i think the stuff's rolling out now and they they actually have some stuff in battlefield one that makes it a bit better like if you have a season pass you can invite your friends who don't have a season pass to play the new maps with you oh well that's good at least that's cool yeah but i think i like the battlefront 2 approach much more oh yeah yeah which I is think, free maps i right? think we're getting past the whole time of season passes uh yeah i hope so it, like titanfall did it too right yeah titanfall is done with it overwatch is done with it uh microsoft is done with it with both halo and gears which yeah, is awesome so, i mean like it's it's gonna be like a trickle down thing so i mean it's not gonna be immediate but i think by the end of next by next fall not this coming fall but like 2018 fall i think we're not gonna have season passes a lot anymore maybe here or there but yeah let's hope um, um there is a deluxe edition though cool uh does it have a still book or anything or is uh, it just like a bunch of dlc goodies i didn't look into it too much mm -hmm. uh, i know it has a different cover it's a lot like the battle from one like reboot battlefront one special edition remember how it was the close dude of Stormtrooper? yeah that battlefront one battlefront one special edition has such a sick cover i know it's so much <laughs> better than, it's so it, much yeah. better than the, like the vanilla one i think our buddy like had the poster of that or something so that's all the info we have on both campaign and multiplayer we can talk about the overall thing for a little bit if you want to yeah well yeah i i'm pretty excited about it coming out the first game i I didn't really care for it too much as much as i wanted to at least because like yeah. when that game was announced like you know getting the battlefield guys to make battlefront it seemed like the best idea in the world to me yeah but it seemed like a product of being rushed and like kind of you know they wanted to polish it in a way that it wouldn't be like battlefield 4's launch yeah but that led to them making way less content as well yeah and i feel like battlefront 1 or the reboot again right um it does have lots of issues and shortcomings, but I still give it props for having the feel of Star Wars nailed down to a T. Totally. You yeah, know? it's it's one of the coolest like visual and audio tests you can have, I think, in your in your home theater or whatever. Yeah, it's, it's so amazing. Up that battle front. Just yeah. the visuals, the audio. Playing it's, yeah, it's Storm really Trooper. the audio, isn't it? Yeah, just hearing those pew pew lasers. Yeah, they they nailed every single part of the star wars aesthetic for that game even with the new planets like Sullus and going to jack who it was like it just felt like it fit in you know totally so that's something i give them a lot of credit for and if that feel is back and i'm assuming it is because the trailer already gave me heavy vibes of this feels exactly like the last one yeah um and on top of that they add hopefully what's looking to be a really good story and then a more fleshed out what we want multiplayer i'm right. probably gonna play this for more than like two months yeah also like it seems like in a, an important story to the arc too yeah mm -hmm. seems yeah. cool it being canon is very interesting mm -hmm. right now the perception of battlefront is this is a multiplayer game so having a canon story you know it's not like call of duty having a campaign this is like this affects star wars totally yeah so this feels like it's going to be a big deal so i'm interested to see how the marketing goes going i wonder forward. how much content they're going to put in this game too just in general like for the multiplayer because like i saw some good points about like how they can just recycle co like assets from the last game and just put mm -hmm. them in this one and yeah, no one would like really care and they, they really should do that too yeah i think from what they showed uh it looked I, again everything it was in engine footage but it wasn't like gameplay yeah, I mean, so, it's going to look really good. I, I have oh, no doubt in DICE. You know? No, yeah, I, I'm not doubting them at all. I just mean, it looked, they barely showed any original trilogy, like, timeline era stuff. Mm -hmm. So, I'm a, like, what they did show looked exactly like the marketing for Battlefront 1. Yeah. Like, the reboot. So, um, again, yeah, I'm assuming they're just going to copy-paste, like, some of the maps, maybe shift them around a bit add new maps but keep everything else you know yeah i assume they'll like they'll they'll take the assets and then shift them around 
Yeah, and, and then, then just go full on with prequel and sequel. Yeah, definitely. Because with the sequel era, there's like, we just have episode seven to go on, you know, and I'm they're probably going to be adding a DLC planet for eight right before, just like they did last year. Oh, but you don't think it's going to launch with like an eight planet or something? No, I think because remember when Battlefront One came out, the the Jakku thing, like we were saying. Right, right. It came out like two weeks before the movie. So you think they'll do an eight map two weeks before the movie? Probably, because there's one planet that they just announced for episode eight. It was the scene in the trailer with the red smoke right. that we were talking about. Uh, yes, it's called that's Crate. a cool planet. What's it called? Crate. All right, <laughs> that's a planet. Yep. So I think Ryan Johnson named it. Um, it's a Ryan Johnson name. Yeah. So I think. Seven, we're only going to be getting, like, less than three planets, I think. Yeah. So then, then really, we're looking to the prequel era here, aren't we? Right. And yeah. in the concept art, they showed Kamino, and it was all rainy, and it was the clone troopers there, and it looked amazing. Yeah, that sounds really awesome. It looked so cool. Rainy Star Wars planets are my favorite. Yeah. Um, there's all there's all sorts of stuff in the prequel era that I hope this game can, like, legitimize, you know? I like, know, make yeah. it awesome. Because, like, you said before about the authentic Star Wars feel. Mm-hmm. If they can do what they did for those movies, for the original trilogy, to the prequels, yeah, that could be pretty awesome. Yeah, dude, the prequels have been getting some more love recently. Yeah, dude, don't get me wrong, I think they're pretty bad movies. But like, I know, but I mean, they have like some really whole... cool like concepts in there that yeah. definitely shouldn't be like you know scrapped because hey, those movies weren't really that great. But um, yeah, since we're still talking about Star Wars and. Uh, prequels and the he- the history of Star Wars. I have a short game. Another game this week. Okay. It's called That's My Jedi and That's My Sith. Alright. So, we're both gonna think of two Star Wars games. Okay. Um, one and we're gonna just run through them quick by title and you're gonna say if that's your Jedi or that's your Sith. Okay. So your Jedi is the one you like the best. The Sith is the one that you hate or like right. have have weird feelings on. You don't have to like say it sucks. Just like so, we're both going to mention two Star Wars games. One's going to be one we like, and one's going to be one we don't like. Or yes. like, or okay. So all right, I got all right, you. So you want to go first? Yes. Uh, Soul Calibur Four. <laughs> is that cool? <laughs> yeah, sure. All right, I, um, man, I'm gonna put this on like. Is that well, your Jedi or your Sith? Is this my Jedi or Man, let's say it's my Jedi. Because, like, right. I think that game kind of, like... I wasn't really that into fighting games when that game came out. Mm-hmm. But, like, it had, like, Darth Vader and Yoda in it. I think it was Darth Vader if you bought PS3. Yoda if you had 360. Mm-hmm. I had the 360 copy of that. Oh, and, really? Yeah, and I ran through that story. And, you know what? I had a great time. And then I started to, like, kind of appreciate fighting games with it. <laughs> yeah, I remember my neighbor had it on the PS3. Yeah. And playing as Darth Vader was awesome. Yeah, he looked awesome. I think he eventually came to the 360 version, but I don't think I ever tried him out. Yeah, probably. Was that the yeah. same release that got Link? Or was no, that the first I think Soul Calibur 2 or 3. Okay. Yeah, I think Soul Calibur 2 or 3 had, like, got, uh, Kratos in the PS2 version and Link in the GameCube version. Uh, okay. Something like that. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so for my... Um, the first one I want to bring up is actually Star Wars Bounty Hunter. Okay. And that's my Jedi because this one I haven't played in years. It could be terrible now. It probably is terrible. I think it's on PS4, isn't it? It is. Yeah. Uh, and I've been really nervous about getting it because I don't remember, like, I remember specific scenes from that game, but playing it in 2017, I'm nervous. Yeah. You know, like just revisiting it, but. Man, yeah, I just remember having a blast with that game. I think I checked out that game for, like, the first time with that PS4 release. Oh, really? Yeah, it seems cool, man. I don't know. I, I think you'd be pleasantly surprised with how well it still plays. Because mm-hmm. it didn't seem like, by no means, for, like, a lot of games that came out last, like, PS2 generation that were, like, bad and third-party licensed games, mm-hmm. that game held up pretty well. Yeah. So, well, it's good know. to know then, because, yeah. yeah, I remember uh, a lot of the, like, the whole setup, like, you being Django Fett, and going right. through Coruscant and all the other like different locations from the prequels and being a bounty hunter that was so cool yeah um and I think you, you fought a Rancor at the beginning with none of your gear and then you had to I remember getting the jetpack and just like flo- flying around and burning people it was so much fun mm-hmm. what, like what a cool game I wish we got 1313 <laughs> yeah 1313 um, would have been something yeah so what about your Sith my Sith have one? yeah uh man let me 
Let me scrape. There's a there's a few, right? Like there's a few pretty bad Star Wars games out there. Yeah. Um man. <laughs> oh. Okay, I checked this out very recently. All right, cuz you told me to. And man, I, it was pretty bad, not going to lie. Uh and I'm sorry if this breaks your heart. The Masters of Terracossi. Oh, no, yeah, that's a bad game. That's a really bad game. Yeah, it's <laughs> that's not like, good. That's horrendous. It's not a bad, it's not a good game at all. Like, oh my god. It's so bad. Maybe we should do a video on that or something cuz like <laughs> it's it's really something. <laughs> yeah, the, I remember the controls in that game are awful. Yeah, it's really it's really such a mess and like I I I picked it up and like all the um all the cool people you want to play as are like locked too. Like Yeah. And there aren't any cheat codes. Like, I tried to find a cheat code to like unlock Darth Vader to play as, but like I couldn't, so yeah, I don't know, man. It just like it plays like a really bad 3D fighter. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Someone should make a good. Oh, wait, we just talked about Soul Calibur. Yeah. So I guess my my second was about fighting games with Star Wars, but uh, uh, fair. Yeah. There, I, there's there hasn't been a really good lightsaber combat game. I think it's tough, man, because like lightsabers in like in the prequel era, right, are supposed mm -hmm. to be like pretty slicey, right? Yeah, like, like hot you definitely don't want to get hit with a lightsaber. Yeah. And. That's the same in, like, the new ones, too, but, like, it feels like they don't really know whether they want it to be a slice thing or... or like, a, like a stabby sword thing. Or like a stabby sword thing, yeah. I think episode yeah. 7 actually showed some weight with it, which was cool. Yeah, I like that a lot. Yeah. Like, that's a great lightsaber fight. I don't know if I brought this up on the podcast before, but... For Honor Combat in a Star Wars oh, yeah. lightsaber game. Totally. Anyone, any developer can take that idea from me. They can. They don't have to pay me. Just yeah. do it. I'll be happy. That'd be, that'd be cool, so man. cool. Yeah, definitely. Just like an approach like that would be so cool. But um, um. So my Sith is one that I had as a kid. I had like three copies of it for some reason. Okay. It was on PS One, or I had it on PS One, and uh, it's not one I don't like. It's just I like. I remember having fun with it, but I'm probably never gonna touch it again ever. What was um, What was so bad about it? Is it just like it was just. It was what? really weird. It was a bunch of mini games, kind of. Oh, okay, yeah. Like you, well, actually, it wasn't really mini games. It was just different styles of game play. But you, your hub—it wasn't even a hub. It was like your menu, main menu, was in Jabba's palace, and you got to. Oh, that sounds as, like garbage already. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> you got to play as different bounty hunters. Yeah. And, um, going to kill certain targets in like arena environments so it was it was basically like it played like twist and metal kind of all right so you were in like speeders and if you were boba F or jango no who was yeah if you were boba fett you had the jetpack and you could just fly around but it was like ps1 and it was just really weird dude yeah i gotta look this up i don't, I don't know that sounds like just, I just want to say, like, I think my least favorite part of the original trilogy of Star Wars is that Return of the Jedi opening. <laughs> so, like, yeah. that sounds like a bad place to operate a hub menu. Uh, yeah, honestly, it wasn't even that. Yeah, I bet. I bet that's not even, like, a, a real big problem, but just no, immediately yeah. hearing you say that just makes me sound like, oh, wow, I never want to touch that. <laughs> like, <ever. laughs> no, yeah, I feel. But, like, I think what it was, it was, like, they put a lot of detail into it because you mm -hmm. were just going through menus, so it was, like, different corners of his palace were different menus for like this is the car combat section this is the flying around section this is the some other section i honestly forget how many variations there were for gameplay but yeah so that one's probably my sith there's so many star wars games there's a lot of good ones there's a lot of weird ones i wonder what the ratio is of how many bad ones to good ones there are like i'd say I'm... it's i'd say it's positive you think you? Th I think it might be like an even split, maybe, or maybe like a bit more good ones than yeah. Yeah, I'd say it's like slightly, but like significantly slightly positive. Right. I'm just know? remembering. I uh, remember Star Wars Connect. Oh my God! Yeah, the Han Solo song. Yeah, that um, there's been some bad ones, but I mean, like a few off the top of my head that were really, like, really different but fun. Remember the one? It was like the racers, but it was like the giant heads. No. It was like a start. It was a Star Wars kart racer. I remember renting it from Blockbuster all the time. Okay. It was a Star Wars kart racer, and you basically 
It was like Mario Kart sized bodies and carts, but you had giant heads. Dude, that sounds really stupid and awesome. I didn't know this I, existed. Yeah, I think the cover had like Darth Maul and Yoda on it. Um, Do you know what the name was? Uh, Star Wars Super Bombad Racing. Get to, I don't think I've heard of that. What platforms? Uh, PS2, GameCube. I played it on GameCube, but um, I think it was on GameCube, actually. I don't remember. Hmm. I might have had it on PS2. But yeah, the cover is Sebulba, Darth Maul, and Yoda. What was the name again? Bad Bomb? Super Bomb Bad. B-O-M-B-A-D. Dude, that sounds like a fake game. <laughs> I know. It's, it's so crazy, though. All right, yeah. I'm looking this up. That sounds nuts. Yeah, it was... Was, was that it was head thing? Weird. It wasn't like a mod or anything? No, it was just big heads. Oh yeah, I'm looking at this cover right now. This is, this looks terrible, but like, <laughs> I guess, it's pretty novel though. <laughs> yeah, I I remember like the box is what sold me on it. <laughs> yeah, that box art is a mess. It was a, yeah, it was like a good choice. It got my attention. <laughs> yeah, but I think after this year is really when we're gonna get like, actually probably E3 is when we're gonna get a big look into star wars games for the next few years yeah so. i mean like you know i think probably like now that persona 5 and zelda is out my most anticipated video game might be uh the visceral star wars game yeah dude i can't wait for that that's one. gonna be incredible uh amy hennig is the best <laughs> do you think they show that off at e3 yes please i, they I thought to. they like, might have showed else? it up this week man see i did too i thought because the press release said star wars games right like yeah. ea's bringing star wars games like plural like so, i didn't even know the thing was over until you just told me that i was like oh man were you just getting that visceral game uh i think celebration is still going on i know mark hamill had a panel today oh, okay so but i know yesterday was the dice star wars battlefront 2 reveal i don't know if there's gonna be a separate panel for games hmm. um i don't know when the schedule for our celebration actually ends if I can only hope for one other thing to be shown off this year, it would be the Visceral game. Yeah, that has to be next year at least, right? Come on. I mean, hopefully. I hope. With that Han Solo game, please. A Han you think Solo it's a movie. Han Solo game? No, I think it's. I think we thought that originally, but I think it's going to be like a Han Solo-like. I mean, the person making it made the Uncharted games, right? Which are basically yeah, Han Solo they, games. Yeah. So, like, you know, it's well, going mean, to be something. They're... What was it? Shadows of the Empire on N64 had a not Han Solo Han Solo yeah. named Dash Rendar. Right. So it would be cool as hell if they reboot Dash Rendar. Sure. And like just bring him in the canon because that'd be really cool. I think that would be like enough fan service that they don't have to do anything else in the game, you know? Have they rebooted anyone who was exiled from the canon and put him back in the canon? Uh, Thrawn. Maybe like, I guess you'd say like Ben Solo kind of was, I guess, right? Yeah, uh, the whole Rey and Ben Solo and it's not confirmed but they're probably related just like like cousins at least yeah and then um uh jane and jaden were the main protagonists of that uh old the thrawn trilogy right, right. uh and they, they brought thrawn back for rebels so he's been really big for season three and four mm -hmm. um so i think just like having nods to the characters and stuff like that and um i think episode eight is going to bring some more people in uh, they brought back the writer of the Thrawn trilogy to write a book about Thrawn. Mm -hmm. And he's no doubt going to sneak some stuff in there. I know the guy who wrote the Tarkin book brought some stuff into canon that he wrote in that Darth Plagueis book. Yeah. So, like, there are connections that are coming in just because they're bringing back people who were so involved in the old Expanded Universe. So The Darth Plagueis book you just mentioned is from the old Expanded Universe? Yeah, that was, like, right on the line. Okay. Of when they bought it. Are we still assuming the theory about him being, um, about Snoke being Plagueis yet? Um, I, th that's what I think it is. If it uh, is someone from the past, um, I hope it, it could is. be someone new. Yeah. <laughs> it has, it would, it'd be so cool if it was Plagueis, man. I know, yeah. Like, I, I just want them to acknowledge the prequels as much as they can, and they, they've been doing that kind of. Yeah, I, like, I honestly, have, well, there's been those rumors that Hayden Christensen is going to be in eight. Right. Wasn't he at the That's Star Wars Celebration, game. actually? Yeah, that so was that really, seemed like a big that was really him, awesome. Right? Yeah, that was really awesome. Yeah, that's, I was really happy he was there. That's super, I heard someone made him sign a jar of sand, <laughs> which is really funny. Yeah. yeah, he got the first ever picture of, of him with Mark Hamill was this weekend. Dude, seriously? That yeah, exists? That I need to check that out. You ever check um, out that um the MMO? Old Republic? Yeah. Yeah. I've been really thinking about like checking that out and like playing through some of the storylines in that. 
because like, I hear yeah. they're like really good. See, the, my only problem was the at the time the PC I was using was garbage. Yeah, I was just playing on a laptop, so mm-hmm. it was like everything looked like clay. Isn't so, it like on Mac though? I'd assume it's not. Oh, it's not. It's only on PC. You just need to get boot camping. No, I know. I'm considering it because I I really want to check it out. As, yeah, I heard some really good things about the storylines in that game. Like that, like yeah, it totally is the closest thing you'll get to a Cold War three. Yeah, I mean, I might wait until after E3 because to see if they do a reveal like a new Star Wars RPG. But if sure. not, then I'll probably check it out because I remember doing the Jedi class and then kind of regretting it because it like I you had to go up until level ten before you got a lightsaber. Yes. And then I was like, okay, I probably either should have gone Sith or Bounty Hunter. Yeah, there was something. I need to look it up. There was some, like, definite route that you should use. Yeah, because the classes were really cool. Because there's, like, Sith, Smuggler, Trooper, a Bounty Hunter, Mm -hmm. and I think a couple others, but... I don't know why that game isn't on consoles yet, by the way, either. Yeah, right? Like, that should just be there, right? I was waiting for that, too, because I was like, oh, maybe they'll pull DC Universe and just port it over. Yeah, I mean, they spent, like, $230 million on that game, too. I know. (laughs) It's so frustrating because that I'd love having that. I, if that was on PS4, I would put so much time into that. Yeah, like hours, like over a hundred hours at least. Totally. Yeah. So that's basically everything we wanted to talk about this episode. Yeah, man. We could go in our hour, I think, on these Star Wars stuff, but yeah, <laughs> I think we should we should probably cap it. <laughs> yeah. Um, like we said, this is still trying to find our footing with certain aspects of what the show will be. So we just wanted to go into one topic very much because again there wasn't much else this this past week news wise. Um, yeah. Dragon Quest Eleven got some info, but that was Japan only. Yeah, July right? It's coming yes. out. I'm gonna. I wanted to sneak that in so bad. I'm really hyped for Dragon Quest Eleven. I can't wait to get into that series. Looks great. I've never played yeah. any of those, but that game looks awesome. I I ordered eight a few days ago for DS. Awesome. So, or for 3DS. So. To check back in with that and tell us how you feel. <laughs> yeah, I'm planning on. It. I wanted to like. A retrospective. I want to try that out for the channel at some point. So yeah, definitely. Maybe, maybe a Dragon Quest one could start it off. But um, yeah, there isn't much else to say on Star Wars news as far as this past week. Um, Star Wars is cool. What what a week though, for Star yeah, Wars. Yeah, lo- lots of info. Really did love that eight trailer, man. Yeah, I really. I think did. that eight trailer is the best Star Wars trailer of at least this trilogy so far. Yeah, yeah, I agree. It was cool, man. It was really good. Um, there we do have socials though. If you want to keep track of other PlayStation-y things, it's not just PlayStation though. It's just honestly anything. Uh, you can follow us on Twitter at PS Followers and on Instagram at PlayStation Follower. Uh, my Twitter has been under my name this entire time, so you can follow me there if you want to check out my stuff. Uh, is there anything you want to plug? Nah, not really. I mean. Uh, I liked your Scorpio analysis. <laughs> oh, thanks. <laughs> heard that, and uh, I haven't really checked out your Balfour analysis yet, but it looks like that one did pretty well for you, though. Yeah, it did uh, pretty good. Yeah, um, yeah, the Balfour one. Uh, obviously, I guess it's kind of useless now that we know more information. But uh, yeah, if you cool. haven't, it's like a cool like, I mean, time capsule. Yeah. So, I would say if you have to check one thing out, check out the Scorpio video. I spent like two nights writing that script and learning about cpu and gpu and i like everyone in the comments saying that we have a bias i mean yeah like i mean yeah sure our name is playstation follower but like hey i primarily play games on pc <laughs> and yeah i mean i have a i have an xbox one too i think sunset overdrive is like one of the best games this generation yeah but guys chill <laughs> <laughs> no yeah I mean, like no I, nowhere I in that video do you say the specs of the ps4 pro are better no i right? know yeah like, no it's like it's obvious the scorpio is like a more powerful machine I don't know, yeah, one of the comments was like, the Scorpio will have better specs, and I was just commenting, like, duh. Yeah, yeah like, okay. <laughs> like, Yeah, we'll like, it's that. coming out a year after the Pro. Obviously, it's going to be better, you know? Yeah. It's just a matter of how they pitch it and how they sell it. It's all about the the messaging, right? Yeah. You know? I saw an article from, like, Polygon, actually, that said, like, they thought the messaging of the Scorpio was clear. But honestly, I felt mm. like it hasn't really been clear at all. <laughs> I think the clearest it's been was E3, and since then, it's just gone everywhere. Yeah, every time, like, someone, like, talks in an interview, it just gets muddier and muddier. Yeah, exactly. It reminds so. me a lot of, like, when the Xbox One was originally announced, and they had that all that, like, crappy DRM stuff, mm. and, like, people in interviews would say, no, 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 it's not like that, and then other people in interviews would be like, yeah, yeah, it is like that, you know? <laughs> yeah. It's like, it's like, get, get your shit together, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. 
But um, yeah, I guess that wraps this week's episode. Yeah. Unless there's anything else you want to say. Nah, that's it. I went on a bunch. <laughs> All right. Well, greatness awaits, and we will see you in the next episode.